Welcome to the Video Dictionary. My name is Benjamin Lewis. Today we're going to take a look at a word that's getting thrown around quite a bit lately. And we're going to see if it actually applies to the situation it's being applied to. Collusion. Noun. A secret arrangement between two parties for the purpose of deception. The word collusion began its life innocently enough. It was a compound of two Latin words, com, meaning with or together, and ludere, meaning to play. The Latin word collusionem literally meant to play together or into each other's hands. But it never appears to have actually been used that way, even on his journey through French and into English, it's always had the modern definition. And what most people think of when they hear the word collusion is the definition that involves two people communicating with each other, knowingly and secretly deciding to do something to deceive or hinder another party. Prescription and commentary. So let's take a look at the situation the word collusion is currently being applied to. I was browsing Twitter the other day, and I saw that the hashtag Trump colluded was trending for a pretty long time. Now, if you've watched the news or gone on YouTube or looked at the internet for any period of time, you know that the FBI is investigating Trump colluding with Russia. Now, there are three parts to this that we can use to verify the information that we've gotten from the FBI so far to see if the word collusion is something we can actually use to describe what Trump has been proven to have done and whether this hashtag is something that's reasonable or not. The first part that we need to make sure that the word collusion is one that can be applied to Trump and Russia is Trump. Trump actually has to be involved knowingly talking to the other party, in this case Russia, and secondly, Russia needs to be there, of course. And third, we need to see that Trump communicated with Russians to make an arrangement to deceive Americans. Those are the only three things that Comey and the FBI need to have shown us to have a hashtag like this actually mean something that's real. So, let's take a look at what Comey's given us so far. Well, most recently we've gotten the indictment of 13 Russian nationals who posed as Americans online. They went so far as to create a virtual private network, or VPN, in the United States so that if their activity was tracked, it would look like it was coming from within the United States. In the press conference, when these indictments were announced, it was also mentioned that there were no allegations that any American knowingly participated in these illegal activ activities. And it didn't even appear that these activities affected the outcome of the election at all. Does this indictment show collusion? Does it fit the definition for the word? I'm going to go with no, because collusion would require both parties to knowingly agree to engage in the harmful or deceptive activity. So, this doesn't really fit um, the Trump colluded narrative. Let's take a look at some of the others. The Paul Manafort and Richard Gates indictment seem to be nothing more than tax evasion through foreign bank accounts, fraud, and lobbying on behalf of a foreign nation. All back in 2012. All of this happened well before either of these men were a part of the Trump campaign, and even before Trump had announced his run for the presidency. Now, does this fit the definition we're working with for collusion? Well, it sounds like Manafort may have been working with the Ukrainians to hide some money from the U.S. Treasury Department and possibly commit some fraud with them. So there might be a little bit of collusion there, but does it fit the situation we're in? Is Trump colluding with the Russians? I don't see that in this circumstance at all. This is something completely different from a long time ago. 
relatively long time ago. The most concerning indictment here is of George Papadopoulos. He's accused of having communications, well, let me rephrase that. He's accused of lying about having communications with a Russian who claims he had information about Hillary Clinton. In the indictment, it describes Papadopoulos having meetings with this Russian professor while he was a foreign policy advisor for the Trump campaign. And after a few meetings, the professor mentioned that he had talked to the administration of Russia and they had dirt, quote-unquote, about Hillary and thousands of emails. The indictment does mention that the professor wanted to set up meetings with the campaign to discuss this information, but it doesn't describe if that actually occurred or that it may have occurred at all. This appears to be the closest thing to Russian collusion that we have. We have a person meeting with a Russian and talking about getting dirt on the opponent of the uh, campaign that he's working for. But most of this, up until this point, still isn't even illegal. You wouldn't be much of a foreign policy advisor if you didn't have experience with the foreigners and the countries you'll be advising about. So, that's not necessarily something that's wrong or illegal in this circumstance. And even if they did have dirt on Hillary, how is that much more different than hiring an, an opposition research firm like Fusion GPS who sends an ex-foreign intelligence agent to Russia to buy information about your opposition? There's not much difference about in there. But this indictment still doesn't include Trump agreeing secretly with any Russian to deceive or harm the United States in any way. So, at this point, we can say that there is no firm information behind the hashtag Trump colluded. There's nothing to back it up. What is interesting, though, is that what started this whole Trump-Russia collusion investigation thing was the DNC, the Democratic National Convention, hiring an opposition research firm, Fusion GPS, who then hired a foreign intelligence agent to collect information from Russia about their opposition, and then that was fed to the FBI so they could get permission to monitor people within the Trump campaign. They didn't even have to break into a hotel to wiretap and steal information. They used the Obama administration and the intelligence agencies that are meant to protect us to do oppo research for them on Donald Trump. Well, thank you for watching and putting up with me ranting about stupid people on Twitter. Um, if you'd like to see the sources I've read and the other information, I've put a link to the blog post about this down below where you can find those links. And until next time, keep on learning.